Trey Young is arguably one of the most hated basketball players in the world. From receiving relentless bullying to getting constant criticism about his playstyle, it's no surprise that he's barely in the spotlight. However, what if I told you that Trey Young is a misunderstood superstar? With achievements better than LeBron and a kind heart for the people around him, it seems like all of this hate is misguided. But how did this all start and why is he so hated? Well, to find out, we need to go back to 1998 when Rayford Young, a Texas Tech basketball standout, became a father to a young boy he named Trey. After Rayford finished his college and professional basketball career, Trey and Rayford settled down in Norman, Oklahoma, where Trey would develop his love for the game, watching all-time great point guard Chris Paul play for the Oklahoma City Hornets, and eventually superstar Kevin Durant for the Oklahoma City Thunder. He grew up learning the game from his father, mimicking players that he looked up to like Steve Nash, working day after day on his game, and ultimately prepared himself to dominate in high school and college. Trey wanted to become one of the greatest point guards to ever play. However, the young prodigy was often overlooked due to his small body, standing at 5'11 during his high school years. So, Young developed a chip on his shoulder that helped him dominate his competition. You use that chip every day to get you going, every day to push you past this guy. I want to destroy this guy in front of me. You use that chip on your shoulder. And while you're climbing up, everybody love it. And this led to his hometown college, Oklahoma, where he was a ball boy in his younger days, offering him a scholarship in 2014, when Trey was only 15 years old. In fact, he was so good that Oklahoma head coach Lon Kruger said the following about watching Young before offering him a scholarship. You probably watched him for the first time in, a, in an organized setting as a ninth grader, very skilled. Uh, very talented, I could tell early on he's going to be a special player. But during the summer between his second and third year of high school, everything truly changed for Trey, as he had been performing at an incredibly high level and scouts were starting to take notice. He was invited to attend a Nike camp in the Bahamas to showcase his talent against some of the best players in his class, including current MVP candidate Jason Tatum and elite NBA guards Malik Monk and De'Aaron Fox, meaning the stage was set for Young to prove he was more than just an undersized guard. But this was not the case, as shortly after, Trey's NBA dreams were almost completely crushed. You see, Trey Young wasn't always the superstar point guard we know today, as during his early high school years, Trey was more of a shooting guard, scooting further and further back behind the three-point line as everyone around him grew taller. And this caused Trey to struggle at the Nike camp. I couldn't get past half court, and I remember like just going and Fox was just sliding his feeds. I couldn't get past half court, and Malik Monk was on my team. I remember Gary Payton, he was our coach, and I remember him just yelling, Malik, come get the ball. Come get the ball. And so I just went and stood in the corner. And so that that was like a big wake up call. I'll be honest with the world. Like, But this failure didn't stop Trey. No, it fueled him. As over the summer, he continued to work hard on his game, fixing his ball handling issues and becoming the true point guard we know today. He made a massive leap, averaging an insane 42 points per game in his final year of high school. And after representing the under 18 United States team, where Young and his team won gold, making it perfectly clear that Trey was ready to make the leap to college and prove to the world that he was more than just a scrawny point guard. But despite this leap, ESPN never ranked him as the number one guard in his class, always saying that Trey was just too small and lacked the size and strength to finish around the basket. On top of that, they also noted that his fragile frame would never make an impact on the defensive side of the floor, making the chip on his shoulder even larger. And Trey was ready to make a huge decision. The talented point guard decided to commit to his hometown college, Oklahoma, and the work that he had put in was paying off. He started the season incredibly, with Trey beginning to receive comparisons to another undersized guard who could shoot from anywhere on the floor, who was also becoming a huge fan of Trey Young's game. He's unbelievable. Uh just the confidence that he plays with and it seems like he's always composed and knows what he's trying to do every time he has a ball in his hands and I, I know when I, you turn on the game you watch them play he's gonna do you, you're just watching him you know on the floor where he is at all times and then this comparison turned Trey into a fan favorite overnight with founder of the ringer Bill Simmons who was well known for hating college basketball tuning into Oklahoma games because he loved Young's game so much saying that Trey is the best freshman guard I have ever seen and ultimately went on to rank him higher than Magic Johnson and Derek 
rose. Everything seemed to go perfect for Trey. Oklahoma had a 12 win, 1 loss record, and Young was showcasing exactly why he deserved to be ranked as the number one guard in his class. Oh my, my dear friends, thank you for hiring me, Bob. Young. Oh, but this is where things started to take a dark turn because after a shocking loss to an unranked Kansas State team, Oklahoma's season was taking a nosedive, losing 13 games and only winning six in the second half of the season, with many previous Trey Young fans suddenly turning against him. However, Trey never looked to deflect the blame for his team's poor performance, always taking ownership for his own failures. I haven't been able to find a, a rhythm from anywhere on the court, it's gotta get better. Um, gotta, gotta improve and I will, um, I will. And despite Oklahoma's lackluster second half, Trey was the first ever player in NCAA history to lead the nation in scoring and assists, with Trey living up to the hype and pressure he put on himself. Me, I just, I pray and I hope that uh, I'm just looked at as one of the best PGs to ever play this game. But what came next would change Trey's career for the worst, as he entered his name into the 2018 draft. And this was met with many negative comments from NBA media, such as Max Kellerman saying, And I would suggest staying in college and developing, because if you think it's tough to play in the backcourt in college, you know what it's going to be like in the NBA in a guard-driven league? And others like Skip Bayless also stating that he will never be a dominant NBA player because he's just too little. However, in 2009, another tiny guard, fresh out of dominating college basketball, was also entering the draft, with many analysts and experts saying the same things. Yet, a certain assistant general manager, Trevor Schlenk, saw something in this player that many didn't, and that player turned out to be four-time NBA champion and two-time MVP, Stephen Curry. Trevor Schlenk, one of the many members of the Golden State Warriors management team who were responsible for building the Warriors franchise from nothing into to a dynasty had recently been promoted to the head general manager of the Atlanta Hawks, tasked with performing exactly what he had done for the Warriors for the Hawks. Atlanta, who were the third worst team in the NBA during the 2017 and 2018 season, fittingly won the third pick in the 2018 NBA Draft Lottery, a pick that they would use to draft an 18-year-old EuroLeague MVP, Luka. Doncic. But what happened next would change both Luka and Trey's careers forever. The Dallas Mavericks held the fifth pick and decided to use it to draft Trey Young. Trey, who was born in Texas, was ecstatic to be playing for one of the three Texas-based teams, until it was announced shortly after that the Hawks had traded Luka Doncic to Dallas in exchange for Trey Young and a first-round pick in the next NBA draft. Travis Schlenk now had someone who was considered to be the next Steph Curry by many, as well as another other first round pick. And whilst at the time this trade seemed very fair and reasonable to everyone, it couldn't be any further from the truth, as what happened during the start of the 2018-2019 season would forever change Trey's career for the worst. A few months after the draft, Trey, alongside other Young Hawks players and NBA prospects, entered the NBA Summer League with many fans, coaches and scouts excited to see how the Young prospects would fare against NBA level professional athletes. Their first Summer League game began and like many expected, with Trey's first ever shot attempt against NBA level competition coming off a ball screen and shooting a pull up three. And many fans were excited to see Trey dominate the same way he had in college. But what happened next was shocking. He airballed. Okay, he probably had some nerves. And a few plays later, Trey had another chance to redeem himself, pulling from the logo off a handoff many Trey Young fans began turning against him. Bill Simmons, who just a few months ago ranked Trey Young higher than Magic Johnson, had this to say about Trey after his lackluster Summer League performance. Really has major bust potential. Like really could be out of the league in six years. And Jay Williams shared, I, I don't know if I see him being that superstar level guard at that level because you can push him around. And things seemingly didn't get any better for Trey. In the first half of his rookie season, Trey shot a terrible 35% from the field, averaged four turnovers a game, and struggled on the defensive side of the floor. His horrible start seemingly proved all of his doubters right. But what happened a few months before this is what doomed Trey forever, because Trey had gone from a player that everyone loved and wanted to see succeed to a player that everyone was hating, calling him a bust, 
and saying he would never become a superstar level player. But why? Well, it was all because of one single player, Luka Doncic. Luka came into the NBA and dramatically overperformed expectations. And whilst one rookie struggling with another flourishing is totally normal and expected, the Hawks decision on draft day meant Trey and Luka were forever linked. And thanks to Luka's exceptional performance from day one, it meant that many fans and media personalities were bashing the Hawks for their decision. However, on a random Saturday night in January of 2019, in a game against the Portland Trailblazers, something about Trey was very different. Starting his night with a beautiful finish, perfectly mistiming his defender and setting the tone for how the rest of the game would go. That game, Trey went on to score 30 points, shooting an incredible 73% from the field and 50% from three. And it was clear that something truly was changing for Trey. This success continued throughout the second half of the season, with Trey improving his terrible 35% field goal percentage to an incredible 47% in the second half of the season. And this resulted in Trey not only winning NBA Rookie of the Month in February, but also finishing second in Rookie of the Year voting behind Luka Doncic. And when asked about his rapid rise, Trey shared, I think people don't understand when you're 19, you're coming in, you're leading, trying to lead grown men, you 30 year olds, 28 year olds who have family, kids. Like, it's an adjustment period. So for me, like, I'm just thankful that I was, able, I was able to learn through some struggles early on to be where I'm at now. And so it's supposed to only be better from here on out. Success never stopped for Trey because thanks to his inspiring turnaround, he became a fan favorite. In just his second NBA season, he received an insane 2.8 million All-Star fan votes, which meant that he was named an All-Star starter. Trey was incredibly excited. Uh, it meant a lot to me. Uh, just watching the game growing up as a kid, always dreaming about playing in the All-Star game, um, being considered as one of the best players in the league. Uh, it's always been a dream of mine, and for it to happen in my second year, it's just a blessing, and um, I realize that Congratulations. But, Thank you. However, something truly shocking happened during that season. With the Summer Olympics coming up in 2020, Trey, who had previously represented the United States at the under 18 level, was excited for the opportunity to at least attend the training camp to better his craft, compete against, and learn from the best guards in the NBA. Uh, for me, even the young guys I get to go um, and just be around the, the, the Stephs and the, the Dames and just learn from those guys, even if you don't make the roster, just going out there and competing and and learning from those guys. So. But not only did Trey not make the 15 player roster for the Tokyo Olympics, he was shockingly excluded from the 44 player training camp roster as well. Whilst we may never know why, it is speculated Young's height and size was considered too small for the international game and Trey's exclusion devastated him. Obviously I, I was kind of hurt uh, that I didn't make the, the 44 players and felt like I deserved to be on that list. But uh, yeah, like I said, I, I would be lying to you if I said I wouldn't hurt. Uh, about it. However, what happened during the 2021 season was even more shocking as the Hawks, for the first time in Trey's career, were in the hunt for the playoffs. But the fans who voted him in as an All-Star last season didn't show up. This meant Young was not announced as an NBA All-Star starter for 2021, which for Trey is not the end of the world as the All-Star reserve players are voted in by the 30 NBA head coaches. And with the All-Star game in 2021 being held in Atlanta, Trey was hopeful he would be named as an All-Star Reserve. Yet, when Shams released the All-Star Reserves on Twitter, one notable player's name was missing, Trey Young. And when Trey was asked about why he thought he was left off the roster, he shared, It's kind of confusing on how I didn't make it. I'm confused. And when a reporter asked him, did it piss you off? Young just shrugged, clearly either sick of discussing this or sharing his frustrations with not being selected. However, things get even crazier because Trey was actually invited to the All-Star game as an injury replacement player due to KD and Anthony Davis both suffering injuries before the game. But according to a reporter, Trey declined this, opting to use the All-Star break to focus on his team and his own game. And this decision clearly paid off as the Hawks finished the 2021 season as the fifth seed and were matched up against the New York Knicks in Trey's first ever playoff series of his career. Young excitingly shared, It's, it's just exciting uh, to be in this position after going through a couple of years of rebuilding. And Trey was ready to prove to the world that he was more than an undersized, unathletic guard. And there is no better place to do this than the mecca of basketball, Madison Square 
Garden. The epic game one battle between the Knicks and the Hawks culminated with 10 seconds remaining and the scores tied at 105. The Hawks had the ball and one final possession for Trey to earn his first ever playoff victory. Young had worked hard to earn this win throughout the game, scoring 30 points before this moment, in which Trey isolates against Knicks defensive specialist Frank Nilakina, who Trey blows right by after multiple between the legs moves, and he attacks the rim hard, only to meet 6'10 Julius Randle, and then Trey effortlessly floats the ball over his outstretched arms. With the Hawks up 2 and 0.9 seconds remaining, the Knicks call timeout. Trey then looked towards the crowd and said, It's quiet as in here. And with the Knicks failing to tie or win the game in the following possession, the Atlanta Hawks had won game one. This loss left Knicks fans stunned, and Trey continued to trash talk as he headed into the locker room. Got real quiet in there. It got real quiet in there. It's still yelling now, I don't care. Many people believe that Trey Young was the one who started the drama between him and Knicks fans. But Trey shared this in an interview with Draymond Green. If you were listening to the game in the 10 minutes left in the first quarter of game one, the whole arena was yelling, Rebound offensively for the Knicks. Can they match up with F Trey Young? What do you want me to do? Like, I'm just hooping, I'm playing. I ain't said nothing to the crowd. I ain't say it's quiet as effing here. I ain't said none of that yet. Trey has consistently received hate throughout his career, beginning all the way in college with Alabama poking fun at one of Trey's biggest fears, birds. Fans printed out and held up signs with what appeared to be a pigeon and made bird noises rather than booing or screaming when Trey was at the free throw line. Bill de Blasio, the mayor of New York during this playoff series, paused an important press conference to make this comment regarding Trey Young's play. This is about basketball. I have an important official announcement message to Trey Young uh, on behalf of the people of New York City and, and anyone who cares about actually playing basketball the right way. Uh, I want to quote Steve Nash, one of the great player, great coach. He says, quote unquote, that's not basketball. Trey, play the game the right way See if you can win. I think the Knicks are going to teach you a lesson. Now, what was de Blasio referring to when he mentioned Steve Nash, one of the greatest point guards of all time and the current Brooklyn Nets head coach? Well, a key issue many fans have with Trey is how he goes about playing basketball. And the possession de Blasio was talking about is this one, where Trey came off a pick and put his defender in jail, which is a normal, legal basketball play. But as soon as Trey felt his defender leaning into him, he jumped straight up, drawing the foul, which led Steve Nash to explode at the ref. And you can hear him screaming, that's not basketball get into the penalty and we're gonna see it again trey's creative ability to bend the rules in a way that benefits him has caused many other players around the nba to heavily dislike him feeling that the way he plays is disrespectful to the game this causes many fans to feel frustrated as well watching trey punish defenders in a way that feels unnatural such as jumping back into his defender and this fueled what many nba fans believe to be the biggest problem with the nba today that players can't actually play physical defense anymore but this comment sums it up perfectly. Trey is simply trying to win the game, and if the refs are allowing Trey to get away with this behavior, then of course he's going to continue doing it. Because as Trey says, when it comes to basketball, like I'm just I'm just so competitive. Like I've just been competitive my whole life. And this competitiveness was on full display during game two of the Knicks series. Because with eight minutes left, another huge reason why Trey Young is misunderstood by fans was revealed. Trey Young was shooting free throws, and the Knicks crowd erupted into a <laughs> poking fun of the superstars thinning hair and this seems to be an issue that many fans have with comments like trey young has the most punchable face in the nba i dislike him because of how he looks and carries himself or this comment saying my hatred for trey young is because he can't find a competent barber hey, yo, what the but as usual, Young remained focused on the task at hand, and the Hawks headed into Game 5, having won three games to the Knicks' single victory, meaning they were just a single win away from eliminating the Knicks and silencing their crazy fans. The Hawks held a solid lead all game long until Trey finally hit this dagger three and then bowed to the arena. This bow, coupled with completely crushing the Knicks and their fans' playoff hopes in spectacular fashion, Knicks fans took to the street and began chanting, 
And shortly after this game, GQ put out an article naming Trey Young as a supervillain. Many analysts believed Trey Young would never get to this point, saying that he's too small, he would never become a superstar, and that he would be a bust. But despite this hate, Young and the Hawks eventually made it all the way to the Eastern Conference Finals. And while the Hawks were eventually eliminated by the Milwaukee Bucks, Trey had solidified himself as a superstar level player. And despite Young eliminating the whole state of New York as a fan base forever, the rest of the NBA fan base was beginning to love him. And thanks to his villain art, Trey tripled his fan votes from the 2021 season. This made Trey an all-star starter once again. And it wasn't just fans who were changing their minds about Trey. It was also the media, coaches, and players too, with Trey being named to the All-NBA 13, crowning him as one of the top 15 players in the whole NBA. However, not only was Trey named to the All-NBA team, He also had a historic season, leading the whole NBA in total points scored and total assists, a feat only achieved by one other player in history, that being Nate Archibald. This insane performance carried a subpar Atlanta Hawks team into another playoff berth against the first seeded Miami Heat. But this is where things started to go horribly wrong for the Atlanta Hawks, as outside of Trey, they didn't have another all-star, allowing Miami to fully focus on Young, causing him to struggle, shooting a horrific, 18% from three, and the Hawks were eliminated from the playoffs in an embarrassing five games. Travis Schlenk, the man who drafted Trey, had decided to step down after losing against the Miami Heat, and former NBA player and San Antonio Spurs scout Landry Fields was elevated into Travis's role. Landry had a clear goal, get Trey the help he needed, because after an Eastern Conference Finals appearance and being named to the All-NBA 13, it was clear the Hawks had a superstar in their ranks. So, the Hawks sent the Spurs three draft picks and Danilo Gallinari in exchange for another 2022 All-Star, DeJounte Murray. The stage was set for Trey to have another incredible season, and with the FIBA World Cup coming up in the 2023 offseason, Trey was hopeful that he would finally make the training camp, and due to the nature of the younger teams the United States brings to the FIBA World Cup, that he would make the playing roster. However, things did not turn out well for Trey Young at all, who despite having another incredible season, averaging 27 points and 10 10 assists per game before the All-Star break, failed to gain enough fan votes to be named an All-Star starter. This meant Trey relied on the 30 NBA head coaches to vote him in as a reserve. But this is where he faced the same issues from 2021. In an anonymous poll by news outlet The Athletic, Trey Young was singled out in one category. When they asked the 54 players interviewed who they thought was the most overrated player in the NBA, Young was voted number one, making it clear exactly what his peers thought of him. And Trey Young was not voted as an all-star reserve in 2023. And things got even worse for Trey, because despite trading for another all-star level player, the Hawks had a 29 win and 30 loss record before the all-star break. This terrible record resulted in their head coach, Nate McMillan, being fired. And whilst it's not abnormal for a coach of an underperforming team to get fired, this was the second time an Atlanta Hawks coach had been let go since Trey was drafted, earning him the nickname Coach killer. Trey's first coach, Lloyd Pierce, was named head coach of the Atlanta Hawks in 2018, the same year Young was drafted, with many praising Lloyd as being one of the best developmental coaches in the whole NBA. This meant that Pierce seemed to be the perfect hire for the rebuilding Hawks, someone who wasn't focused on winning games, rather focusing on developing Young Hawks players for future success. But this is where issues started between Trey and Lloyd. On Christmas Eve in 2019, the Hawks faced off against the Cleveland Cavaliers, and with 5 seconds left on the clock, the Hawks were down 118 to 121. The Hawks required a 3 to tie the game in order to have a chance at winning in overtime. So, Coach Lloyd Pierce calls a timeout to draw up a game-saving play. He decided to have Young inbound the ball rather than come off or set a screen for another player. After Trey inbounds the ball to Vince Carter, it's clear the play was for Young to run off a screen set by John Collins for a corner 3, but Cavaliers defensive special Colin Sexton completely blew this up, forcing Trey to run off Vince and shoot a 30-foot heavily contested three, which he missed, and the game was over. After the game, Trey was asked in an interview if he preferred playing off the ball or inbounding it in game-winning situations, to which Young replied, it's not anybody else's way, but the coach's way. And when Trey reflected years later on why him and Lloyd failed to be on the same page, Trey had this to say. I think the reason me and Lloyd 
really couldn't see eye to eye on certain things because I feel like he was brought in to be a development coach and I was trying to win. You know what I'm saying? Like, and those two things just don't, right. don't work well with each other. Pierce was trying to be an X's and O's coach who was focused on winning, not development, which eventually resulted in him being fired on March 1st in 2021, and their lead assistant coach, Nate McMillan, being promoted to an interim head coaching position. And while Nate McMillan was actually considering retirement at the end of the 2021 season, the Hawks' playoff success in 2021 inspired him to continue coaching. With Nate, like, we got to the conference finals and he wasn't even guaranteed to go further on. He didn't know how long he, would, he wanted to coach. But we went to the Eastern Conference Finals and we were winning and it got him, his juices flowing. He wanted to keep coaching and keep coaching us. And we were all excited and, and doing that and we wanted to keep rolling with him. And after the season, Nate was signed to be the Atlanta Hawks head coach for the next four years. But things did not go as planned for Nate McMillan because Nate is an old school type coach, having played 12 years in the NBA for the Seattle Supersonics. After retiring from playing in 1998, the year Trey was born, he started his coaching career working for the Supersonics as an assistant coach before he eventually being promoted to head coach in 2000. Nate has been around the NBA for a long, long time. And whilst this veteran win now focus is exactly what the Hawks needed in 2021, it's ultimately what caused his relationship with Trey to suffer. Because to begin December in 2022, Trey was suffering with a shoulder injury. And when Nate asked Trey if he planned on attending shoot around before their matchup against the Denver Nuggets, Trey let McMillan know that he was going to miss shoot around to focus on rehabbing his shoulder. Trey was doing this so he could be available to help the Hawks win that night. But Nate did not like this response at at all, informing Trey that he would start off the bench because he missed shoot around, and if he didn't want to start off the bench, to not show up at all. This ultimatum upset Trey, so he made the decision then and there to rest that night against the Nuggets in protest of McMillan's authoritarian coaching style. This difference in mentality between the young superstar and Nate, as well as the Hawks' subpar record in 2023, despite new general manager Landry Fields getting Atlanta a second All Star level player, resulted in Nate McMillan being fired. This this decision by the Hawks management team caused fans and media to call Trey a coach killer. But they say you're a coach killer, which I don't quite understand. We not rolling with that. That's ridiculous. But it's clear all Trey cares about is winning and the Atlanta Hawks organization agrees. And just like the last time Trey was snubbed from the All-Star game and the Hawks head coach was fired, Atlanta made the playoffs and was set to face the Boston Celtics in the first round. Trey Young had multiple epic playoff performances, but none more than game five, with Boston up three games to one and the Hawks being down a single point with seven seconds remaining, Atlanta needed some Trey Young magic to keep their championship hopes alive. With four seconds left, Trey pulled up from the Celtics logo. draining a three over Jalen Brown to put the Hawks up two, resulting in Atlanta winning game five and forcing a game six at home. The Hawks, who came into the 2023 season as an afterthought, a play-in team at best, had been carried by their young superstar to another playoff berth. And whilst they would lose game six, at this stage in Trey's career, year five, he proved that he's not a bust and is a genuine superstar level player capable of carrying his team and with the right pieces could very well be a championship winning level point guard. And with the FIBA World Cup fast approaching, Young was hopeful that he would be named to the training camp squad to compete for a spot on the 15-man international roster. And Trey had a secret advantage. You see, most star players don't actually want to represent the United States at international events. But when asked about if he wanted to represent the US, Trey shared, I definitely want to. It's up to them if they want me to. I mean, I would love to, to play with guys and show off my passing even more and not have to go out and score a lot and just be there if they need me to. So obviously I'd love to play, but we, I mean, I, I respect the, the OGs and understand it's got to take your turn, but I believe I should be Thank on you. But this is where the Trey Young disrespect gets mind blowing with him being left off the training camp squad for the FIBA World Cup without a real reason. This left Trey feeling confused and upset. He wanted so badly to represent his country and compete for a gold medal, just like he did in 2018, with NBA veteran and elite podcast host Gilbert Arenas summing the situation up perfectly. Because it's embarrassing sometimes where like you have star play who's really stars that do want to participate and you just automatically just say, yeah, he's not going to fit our style. How, 
you know if he's gonna fit the style or not, you didn't get a man a chance. Or you don't even give up, like there's, there's a reason there's a tryout. Invite us all and let us show you that we can adapt. Don't judge me how I'm playing on my team. Right, my team, this is how I'm playing. Let me show you what I can do around other players. And unfortunately for Trey, things haven't exactly improved in the 2024 season. Many high-level players are giving Trey Young respect for his continued improvement, with Orlando Magic star player Paolo Banquero commenting on a heavily disrespected part of Young's game, stating, I kind of stopped going after him. <laughs> but what did Bankero mean by this? You see, it's very common for NBA offenses to game plan around attacking smaller players. Steph Curry faces the same problem in the playoffs. Teams will try to hunt him on offense, forcing Golden State to use strategies such as Steph performing a show to avoid having to guard superstar players like LeBron and KD. Because of Trey's size, he has also faced the same issue, with Bleacher Report posting an article naming Young as the worst defender in the NBA. And it was clear the Orlando Magic were trying to hunt Trey. However, Young was holding his own, showing a huge improvement on the defensive side of the floor, with Bankero commenting, like, I, like you said with his shows, like it was kind of getting me stuck in the mud, and then I'm just right back to where I was. And he was doing a great job of, of being there and then getting back. Like but despite this, he still doesn't get the recognition he deserves. Trey, just like in 2021 and 2023, was disrespected by the 30 NBA head coaches who chose not to vote him in as an All-Star Reserve in the 2024 All-Star game. This caused a huge outrage with many NBA players, including LeBron, taking to Twitter to share their frustrations with Trey being snubbed for the third time. But all hope was not lost for Trey, because thanks to some injuries, Trey was invited once again to be an injury replacement, just as he was in 2021. But this time the superstar opted to accept this offer, making him a three-time NBA All-Star. And not only that, Trey was recently named to the 41-player training camp roster for the 2024 Paris Olympics, meaning he finally gets to fulfill his dream of training and playing with the best guards in the NBA. But ultimately, it's clear that something else is far more important important than accolades for Trey. I don't focus on too much of the negative attention and negative things that are said about me or the false rumors that come out about me. Like I'm I'm focused on my team and my family and really my family first, especially with my son now being born. Like especially having a son, like you just want to you want to make sure you're doing the right thing. So eventually when he gets older and he's seeing everything that you're doing now, it, it helps him become who he needs to be. So I'm just just trying to focus on every day, living the right way and making sure I'm a great role model so whenever he does see this this type of thing, whenever he gets older, he he knows that I was doing doing the right things and that he can follow me. His family also opened the Young Family Athletic Center in Trey's hometown of Norman, Oklahoma, aimed at young, inspiring athletes in the Norman and wider Oklahoma area to hone their skills, just like Trey did many years ago. And it's incredible how the media paints a picture of Trey being this villain, someone who gets his coaches fired and will never become a superstar, when in reality, Young has defied all odds, going from an undersized shooting guard who got exposed in the Bahamas to being a superstar all NBA level point guard, even though he may be misunderstood by many just for the way he looks. But despite all this, Trey rises above, focusing on what really matters in his life and continuing to get better and better with every season. More Out of Bounds documentaries are on the way, so make sure you subscribe.